Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. I'm Rob Scribner and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Yep, it's been a while since I got an episode out. Sorry about that. Been super, super busy. Uh, got a lot of things to talk about today. Today I'm going to talk about how we have uh, our RV set up for sunbirding and uh, we are getting the opportunity to use it here in a couple of weeks. And I also want to talk about some of the new things that we're doing. And that's one of the reasons why it's kept me from getting some episodes out. So let's get started. Well, getting started here, I just want to make sure and say thank you so much for you uh, loyal listeners that uh, watch our show or listen to our show. And I do apologize for not getting some of our episodes out. It's I, I've been monitoring a lot of channels and, and some of it's driving me crazy, but uh, I'm watching too many of the nomads, I think. <laughs> it's just, oh, anyway, but um, just to kind of brief you real quick. Yeah, I think I told you before we have our RV up at uh, Central Oregon right now. And at the end of the month or first of October, we're actually going up and uh, checking on Sherry's folks and checking on the RV and getting a chance to see how well we have it stored, make sure no one, <laughs> we don't have a mouse that moved in or anything like that. So, but yeah, um, uh, we'll have you know quite a few episodes coming up about that kind of stuff. But I don't know what it is lately, and I, it's driving me crazy. But um, you know, I, I still monitor some of the nomads like Nomadic Fanatic and Line Screw One, and some of them I've just gotten to a point I just had to unsubscribe because it just drive me crazy and i don't know what it is maybe it's age but uh um and there's couples too i mean uh out there doing the nomadic thing and, and all that but uh i don't know it it's just frustrating to see i mean i in a way you kind of get jealous it's like gosh i wish i could just play all the time and live in an rv but uh i i have learned a couple of things that I noticed, and this is the observation, is uh, when you're in an RV and traveling stuff, you tend to always want to go out and see stuff, not well, because you're in an RV. And what I mean by that is, uh, is staying in your RV all the time will drive you crazy because it's a small space. And so you always want to get out, get the fresh air, go do your thing. And that's cool. I mean, that's how it is. What I'm finding now with a home, and I have to relearn some habits, is um, it's nice to be home and have the space to do projects. One of the things I always was frustrated, and a lot of people won't have this problem in an RV like we did because we do videos and stuff. But uh, if I wanted to do green screen work or something like that in the RV, it would be like a real hassle to set everything up do my recording and then take it all down again and and put it away and and you know what normally would be a half hour project would be an hour and a half and uh, cuz you always get this you can't leave things out in an RV or a small space and so it's been really really nice to have a home now where i have a devoted office and um uh, and podcast set up and uh, it's not in the way, and I'm not sacrificing the dining room table like we did in the RV. And uh, the computers aren't, you know, laying all over the place. <laughs> and we have a devoted room to our electronics, and it's quite a high-tech room we got here now. And I also have a devoted studio, so now I have a green screen set up in another room that's totally all lit, ready to go. Um, and it's plug and play and it's really nice and those are the kind of things that i've uh, uh had to learn to realize that hey we can stay home this weekend we don't need to get out it's like learning how to stay in place is actually our latest crisis um, as opposed to always taking off every weekend and of course when you're in a house and taking off every weekend means you don't get things done at the house either and um, so, but the other problem we got here in Arizona is, although 
I think that's part of the problem when I'm watching all these shows. This is summertime for most people in the uh, north of us. And they're enjoying the regions right now at their fullest because the weather's good. It's just the opposite here in Arizona. This is our winter. So we don't go outside a lot. So And I, that's driving me crazy because uh, I can't take cinder for a walk. And we're not getting the exercise we want to. And we've got yard work we'd like to do. But boy, you get out there working in 100 degree weather. And before you know, you're dripping and you're going, I've just been out here for 10 minutes and you're croaking. Anyway, but um, anyway, but watching <laughs> RVers right now, um, I always enjoy the regular kind of RVers that are going out and seeing some great stuff. And then I watch these nomads, and it's like all I want to say is get a job, uh, or they don't realize that what are you going to do in ten years from now or twenty years from now? What's your resume going to say? Um, I'm a freeloader. <laughs> I've been an e-beggar, <laughs> been something. Anyway, um, although I, I mean, I, it's, I'm glad that they get a chance for the freedom and all that stuff. But the highlight of my day is not trying to find free camping on the side of a road on, or a dead end or street, um, or BLM land that you know just uh, usually is not the most gorgeous places to be. So anyway, it's uh, uh, interesting. I, maybe it's just getting old and stuff. But but I also watch other shows that are uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, some are full-timers, some are snowbirds, sunbirds. And I really enjoy their shows because, I don't know, they feel like they're in touch. <laughs> it's, all I can, it's not all about their channels and, and uh, trying to get more viewers and all that stuff. And... Uh, they're just out there RVing and doing great photography and I really enjoy that stuff. But yeah, um, and I guess, you know, sometimes you wish, gosh, if I was young, would I have done that? Uh, I don't know. I was brought up to kind of have the uh, sustainable lifestyle of, of school, work, children, marriage, all those commitments. And, and so I guess that's the part that makes me a little concerning it's like even having couples out there having kids and have or having going to have kids on the road i just i don't know i um kids also need structure and and a foundation and and, and once again that's kind of old school i know but anyway but i want to move on and talk about something that i feel is important to sherry and i and definitely important to our listeners and i hope what I'm going to talk about in the next uh, module here uh, helps you or, or gives you uh, the enthusiasm to try something different, especially when it pertains to your health. So let's move on to the next module. So before I start the subject, I urge you not to shut it off <laughs> because I'm going to talk about something that, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, being a smoker and someone tells you you need to quit smoking, you kind of like shut them off. And uh, and that's not my goal here. Is uh, so let's let's paint the scenario. I'm 56. My mother died of cancer at 47. My father passed away. I had a heart attack at 53 and had a major heart attack in 59 and passed away. And uh, uh, throughout my life. My, I've enjoyed hunting and fishing. I've enjoyed eating what I want. And uh, I still eat, you know, we eat pretty good. But, um, you know, obviously a snacker. And those of you who see my other videos are seeing that I've gotten quite chunky. <laughs> and Sherry and I both are kind of like uh, little pandas. So finally, it's been time for us to either address this or have that unexpected heart attack or stroke if we don't be careful here and uh, uh, we're pretty active and we keep going but uh, you know we're definitely slowed down since you know our 20s 30s and 40s and so it's been getting concerning so um, I guess my final uh, motivation came along when I watched the video and you can find it on Netflix and it's free and I really urge everyone, um, before I talk more about what I'm going to talk about, is to watch the movie called What the Health. What the Health. 
I hope I said it clear enough. But anyway, uh, it's, it's a great movie. It talks about our eating habits and also how we impact the environment. And so this isn't about some activism type thing. So what I want to talk about is I, I wanted to find a program that encouraged people like me, <laughs> my age, to take a look at maybe wanting to be around a little longer to be around the grandkids and, and live a little longer. And I don't want to be one of those parents that are infringing on my, on my kids' lifestyles because um, I'm old and frail. And so, and Sherry's feeling the same way. And it's just like, we keep gaining weight. We just, you know, uh, not feeling good that much and I have diteticulitis so you know I always have uh, issues of I don't know what sets it off um, but it's you know major cramping and and uh, you know some days are really bad and you just feel like crap all day and you know what I'm talking about if you have you know like Crohn's disease or anything like that it's very uncomfortable and it's like finally saw this movie and I was late at night Sherry was in bed and I watched this movie and I'm going I think I can do this and I think I'll be doing something positive for the community and the environment. And this is really big. If just one person changes to this, it affects uh, the environment a lot. So what it is, is Sherry and I, five weeks ago, uh, created what's called the 80-20 Vegan, which basically Sherry and I, have taken up the vegan lifestyle but we called it the 80 20 because the last 20 percent of being a vegan can be a little bit more political than anybody really wants it's hard enough just to eat and change your diet but to go farther with it when you try to uh, animal activism and things like that are really important things and i agree I, you're talking about a hunting and fishing and farming guy here and so that's not really the point on all this, other than the, some of the things of the vegan lifestyle as far as eating is really positive. So there's three categories. There's vegans, which are not only uh, don't, do not eat any meat or dairy products, uh, including eggs, cheese, all that kind of stuff, gone. Um, but they're also animal activism to a point of they won't use you know leather products or they won't use uh, uh, anything that had to, has to do with animal you know animals at all cruelty and that's really hard and and then the other problem is sometimes we go to the grocery store and shopping it's really hard to identify whether they used eggs or milk uh, extract or something for certain products and and, and so, um, so Sherry and I have gone what we call and started a program called the 80-20 Vegan. If you watch our Facebook and stuff, you might have caught some of the shows. And we wanted to create a, a platform of showing, well, God, if that dude can do it, maybe I can do it. And so we don't put an emphasis as you have to go this far with it or that far or you have to be an activist or that stuff. That's not what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to accomplish something for a better, healthy lifestyle for all of us to live longer. So vegans, and sometimes we'll even get nasty notes in some of our videos, so you're not a real vegan because you uh, still tell people it's okay to eat some seafood or something. And it's like, and uh, with any of this I talk about, it's okay to have off days. And if you have a crazy lifestyle, especially if you have kids and stuff, you'll have those days where you're just running around like a chicken with your head cut off and it turns out to be a pizza day. And you order a pizza that's got all the good stuff on it but still has cheese. And you're just like, Are, you know, it's okay. <laughs> you just do better the next day. And so that's um, so vegans are pretty extreme. Then you got vegetarian. Vegetarians are don't eat meat however they do eat dairy and eggs and uh, uh, that's okay too and that might be what works best for you then there's actually the definition of plant-based diet and what's nice about that is there's no 
politics behind it. It's just trying to eat plant-based diet all the time, 24-7, and preferably raw vegetables. So I hope that kind of clears all that up for you. But the benefits, if you could actually even do this, and you don't have to go hardcore right away, but I almost feel it's better to just say, all right, that's it. No more meat, no more dairy. And, and just do it. And then you'll find the first day or two, I think it's all a thought process, is like, oh, this is weird cooking without putting meat on the table. Um, but you'll, uh, you'll find yourself uh, at first kind of missing it a little bit, and then it kind of goes away. And then pretty soon it's like, uh, um, I don't know, you, when you go to the grocery store, you start getting excited to go into the produce section. And... Uh, um, and it's really nice to pass the meat section because you know that's all expensive. But I mean, eating as a vegan isn't necessarily cheap either. One of the other things you'll learn right away is you probably don't have enough tools in your kitchen to maintain a plant based lifestyle because you're constantly cutting things up and preparing it. And you, uh, so the things I've noticed that are increased dishes, a lot more dishes bowls and things like that, a lot more bowls and the, uh, put the stuff uh, in your refrigerator. And two, uh, you need to pull out all the stuff in your refrigerator that's bad for you and your cupboards and get, get it out of, don't give yourself temptation. And then when you get the munchies, open up that refrigerator and see fresh uh, uh, cantaloupe or fresh, uh, uh, I have watermelon cut up right now and also I keep cherry tomatoes, I eat like candy now. And uh, pretty soon you just kind of, uh, and vegetables will actually start tasting better to you. And you can substitute your meat with, uh, they have, you know, a soy based, it's a imitation meat that if you make tacos or a spaghetti and stuff, hey, it's cool. So the other thing Sherry and I have added to it, uh, we started out really minimal. And now uh, we was like, well, you know, the other thing we want to reduce our diet in is oil based, you know, using oil so much because that's really bad for plaque buildup. And we also started switching to whole grain type of breads and pasta and things like that. And uh, the other thing is the best part about this is you can eat anytime you want, any time of day, and you can fill yourself up and you're not going to hurt yourself. Um, it's, it's amazing. And once you kind of realize like I can eat anytime I want, I can be full all the time and stuff. It's just going to be plant-based. So here's some of the benefits you might get while well, you will get if you choose to do something like this. Do you have a hard time sleeping? Do you have digestive issues or constipation, things like that? Or maybe you have an ailment like me. I have diverticulitis. Um, maybe you're young and do you feel like you're having skin issues like, you know, acne and things like that? Um, do you have aches and pains? If you're older like me, do you have high cholesterol? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have diabetes? Um, um, uh, what is it? Diap level two uh, diabetes. Um, maybe you've just been diagnosed with that. Um, and are you a candidate or feel like you might be a candidate for a heart attack or stroke because of plaque buildup in your veins? And the answer to that, that is, is, and I'm not, I, I urge you to go out and get educated, but you can actually reverse a lot of your symptoms. And maybe you're taking uh, prescriptions. I, Sherry and I don't take any prescriptions at all, thank goodness. That maybe you can actually get off of them. And uh, maybe you can lower your blood pressure. Or maybe you uh, can uh, start cleaning out them veins a little bit. Uh, get off you know, diabetes medication. Uh, maybe you won't have so much aches and pains. I, um, there's, uh, less headaches. Things like that. Uh, if those are th things that are starting to bother you or you're a candidate for, then this may be a great option for you. So um, the funny part about some of it is once you've made this decision, uh, we do have 
our own site called 8020 Vegan. And the only purpose for that uh, ch channel and Facebook page is to let other people know that we're fighting the struggle too. Um, the other thing I haven't mentioned is, do you need to lose some weight? <laughs> And if you guys have seen my videos, the answer to that with me and Sherry is, uh, yeah, <laughs> we need to lose some weight. So I haven't even created what's called our six, six week review yet, but I can tell you a few things that have uh, already happened with Sherry and I, uh, I haven't seen a, a big ish. Um, the big thing I was hoping is sleeping better. Um, but uh, one of the things that, about milk and dairy products is they say it tends to, and I'm going to talk about icky stuff, but tends to cause more mucus, like in your sinuses and stuff like that. And Sherry, she's going to kill me for this, but in the last few years has been kind of snoring as bad as I have. And she always feel, sounds congested. And since we started our vegan lifestyle, uh, it's going away. She's not snoring like she was. I don't know about me because I can't hear myself, but she hasn't told me. But uh, I noticed right away because usually I'm up later and she is. So I go to bed, she's like asleep and then she's really sawing the logs. Not anymore. Um, so that's something there. But as far as really sleeping better, uh, I don't know. They say, you're, and maybe that's my problem now, is you start feeling better and active and your body's like, let's go, go, go. So I go to bed now and my brain's going nuts between all of our new things that we're doing and, and uh, our shows I got to do and video things I'm doing and traveling and boating and all that stuff. I have a hard time getting to sleep at night because I got all this stuff going through my brain. And so uh, I guess I'm going to learn to meditate or something. But uh, anyway, uh, I can tell you right now, my weigh-in at the beginning of this was 294 and I just checked the scales this morning I'm at 2 did I say that right? I was at 294 and I'm at 278 right now so I'm getting close to uh, um, and I'm working I'm hoping in the next two weeks I'll be down 20 pounds and I'm not doing anything like I do need to add exercise. I've been telling you guys it's hot outside. So we're not doing as much walking and stuff. We do have a pool and we try to use that. But um, when I can add on more walking and going outside and taking cinder for walks and stuff and, and actually add, because I'm starting to feel the energy for it to, uh, to start adding exercise to this on top of that, Lord knows how fast I can actually drop the weight. But it's a good healthy drop. It's not like major drops it's like a half a pound every other day it's a slow drop in weight and it's kind of and yet i'm not eating less i'm i'm just eating better and and it's amazing um since you know sherry works and stuff i try to do more of the cooking and uh cooking um is a was a little bit of a challenge but now it's getting easier and easier and uh so like burritos or things like that or tacos you can either use a substitute meat or use beans instead um, and as your filler and uh, eating a lot of salads things like that uh, making some creative things like squash um, it's been amazing and so it hasn't been as hard as I thought it was going to be the problem probably the biggest challenge is uh, when you want to go out and, and if you're like us, going out is a special time. And so you kind of like, but I've found almost every restaurant we go to, there's a way to eat the way you want to eat without making a sacrifice. And a lot of restaurants now are really like, I couldn't believe we went to a pizza with my daughter and them and we ordered a vegan pizza. And not only that, we were able to get they had, it was called the Mushroom Pizza Place, whatever they call it, um, here in Phoenix. They actually had vegetarian cheese, which is out there. And, and it was easy to substitute that on our pizza. And what a joyous thing. It made it so easy for us. To, I, couldn't, I couldn't 
I didn't think we could go to a pizza place. And occasionally, if we need to whip up something quick, how many people like you go to pizza, uh, uh, Papa Murphy's and, and grab a pizza to throw in your oven? Well, we just get a vegetarian, and then when we get home, we put our own vegan cheese on it and then uh, uh, cook it that way. Or if we order from Domino's, we'll get a, 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 a vegan kind of uh, pizza from them. And then when we get it, we sprinkle our own uh, vegan cheese on it and we might actually zap it a little long kind of melt the cheese a little more but yeah i mean it's just it hasn't been as hard as we thought it was going to be so my point to this whole thing is is not preaching what i want to do is just tell you this the alternative out there which we all know about we all know it's there that eating better and um, uh, fruits and vegetables are there it's just you know, we have this mindset of, you know, the barbecuing in the backyard and things like that. Well, you can make vegan burgers and still barbecue. Um, but it's it's a hard change. I mean, I raised my own turkeys and I used to have a game bird farm and I used to go hunting and I love fishing and all that stuff. And uh, so, I mean, I'm just like most people that just love that meat and potato kind of uh, rest, you know, <laughs> menu. But uh, as a result, when you get older, in your 40s, 50s, or 60s, you pay the consequences. You answer for your actions. And so here we are, overweight, probably not as healthy as we should be. You get tired too easy. You can't sleep too much and getting headaches all the time. And, oh, that's one of the other things is Sherry has been getting a lot less headaches. Um, we still get them once in a while. Um, that's exciting my diateticulitis very rarely uh, flares up anymore and there's been a lot of benefits uh, not to mention losing the weight so we have a ways to go yet before it's like oh my gosh uh, when you see my pictures or videos you go wow Rob's really lost weight well this is how we're doing it we're not um, we just changed our diet but we're not dieting I don't want the two words can have two meanings you have diets out there which are all these crazy diets or changing your diet or uh, changing what your input is that uh, and it's basically being plant-based and I want to use the word plant-based because the word vegan or vegetarian sometimes has a, a bad taste in people's mouth so this is the thing plant-based diet anyway uh, I hope I truly hope that if I inspire one person to start changing the way they eat and they start feeling better and automatically if you're a vegan if you stop eating meat and stop eating chicken and you stop eating eggs and dairy the impact in the environment is gigantic and that's why I urge you to watch that movie what the health because the, the animal industry is nuts and it's unbelievable how much food that we are creating just to feed animals, which it should be feeding people. And that's also part of the destruction of the environment down in Latin America and things like that is because we have such a demand for um, millions of, of pounds of meat and chicken and eggs and dairy. And when you start studying that industry, you go, oh my God, um, no wonder that we're all sick and dying. Um, and I'm the first one to say, if I had a little mini farm again and I raised my own cow and I knew what that cow was eating and I gave that cow a good environment to live in and a happy lifestyle and I wasn't pumping them full of crap and all that stuff, I would probably eat that meat. But uh, if you look at the production environment for the meat and the pork and the chicken and things like that that we eat now you'll be disgusted and so um you know a hundred years ago it was certainly necessary to have an alternative kind of uh, eating habits um because you know people had to store meat for the winter and things like that um but so there was pretty much plant-based and there was meat eating back then but now we got this processed food stuff and uh it's so easy and so but it's just crap that we're putting in our bodies 
Once again, I'm not trying to be, I'm just trying to give you a, a, a thought or at least inquire after you watch this show about eating vegetarian or becoming a uh, vegan or, or plant-based diet. And be careful of some of the shows because you'll run into these activists that make you feel guilty or trying to talk about um, being a hot shot. But there's a whole, I'd say 80% of the shows are just wholesome people out there trying to say, okay, so you want to be a plant-based diet person. Here's some great recipes and some very helpful people out there. And the good ones will tell you, you'll fall off the wagon once in a while, or you'll be put in a situation where you're having dinner at somebody's house and you don't want to um, uh, be an inconvenience to them because you can't uh, ha eat half the food that they put on your plate. Um, it's okay to say, all right, um, I'll have turkey today and stuff, but I'll get right back on board the next day and not feel like you're just a sinful person. And... Just like smoking, you don't need someone that's saying you gotta quit, you gotta quit. You need someone to inspire you. You need someone that you can watch and say they're going through the same emotions and feelings I am and know that I'm gonna have bad days. And so it's kind of like a community. And when you have a community all working for the same uh, goals, it makes it that much easier. So I'll leave it at that. And I hope I wasn't sounding too preachy. I was just hoping to maybe it inspires you to ask yourself, could I do this? Could I eat better? Would it make me healthier? What are my benefits? Is it worth it? And I, I know the answer is yes, but you're not alone. And so you got the 8020vegan.com uh, is the site that we have. Its goal is not selling anything or whatever. It's just to say we're a community. I'm trying to do it. Here's my results. If you want to do it, I'm, I'm behind you and I'll support you if you support me. So that's what it's all about. So let's move on to a new subject. Well, you guys have been telling, you know, uh, hearing me and Sherry talk about, you know, the fact that we bought a home again, we become uh, sunbirds. One of the other benefits I've uh, discovered is now that I have a, a home and stuff, I actually have room to work on things I couldn't do in the RV when we were living full time. And one of the new things that Sherry and I have discovered is doing what's called resin art, uh, R E S I N resin art. And um, basically, it's dealing with um, basically putting a board down and, and taking different colors of resin and blending them in different ways and different kind of chemical ad additives to give certain effects and create some beautiful art. And it's been so much fun because we have the workspace to do it. And uh, that's one of the things that have been hard, you know, hard about being a full-time RVer is there's a lot of personal things like now I'm doing resin art and doing resin jewelry now and we actually rejuvenated a channel we had which was called northwest images which used to be stock uh, photos and stuff like that and we changed it to an art channel so uh, you might see in some of our stuff where uh, when, uh, especially on the personal facebook you'll see uh, some of the videos that we're doing on how to do resin art so if you enjoy doing art projects <clears throat> and uh, or would like to look at maybe making resin jewelry which would be pretty feasible in an RV. Uh, take a look at Northwest Custom Images. Um, and it's spelled out, there's no abbreviation for Northwest. It's actually Northwest, the full word. If you go to NorthwestCustomImages.com, you'll see some of the stuff we've started to do. We've just started. And, and it's fun to have hobbies. And it's fun to get uh, learn how to do something that you can actually, you know, sell some of it, in which we uh, created a shop in it's, uh, Etsy, E S T Y. So some of our pieces we'll put in there, and uh, if they sell, great. If they don't, it's still fun to do. Anyway, uh, that's one of the things we've noticed that we're, having a home base is kind of nice to get down to be able to do some of your own personal things instead of filling the. Uh, um, 
it to be necessary to get out of the RV and go you know, charge out adventures, which are great, and there's nothing wrong with that. But um, that's one of the points I've had in this whole thing is I've noticed that when you have an RV, all you want to do is get out of it. When you have a house, it's like you got to learn how to actually enjoy being at the house. And so uh, uh, what a change of lifestyle and, and, and not hard when you and I've said this in shows before. Once you've got the wonderlust, once you've started traveling, you'll always want to travel. So you need to set yourself up for success and realize that if you're going to have a base, a home or a small home or something like that, or just an apartment, um, to give yourself enough, um, you know, don't get something too expensive so you have extra cash or money to be able to say, I'm going to take off for a week and go do something because you're going to always have a little bit of that wonderless. And so, yeah, uh, something that is really important to keep in mind that if you're deciding to settle down again, um, keep that in mind that you want to make sure you can uh, fulfill those urges of getting away. Um, and if you're just the opposite um, and you're traveling all the time, you feel like you're missing out on something, I'd have to say, yes, you are. Some of your own personal growth as far as uh, hobbies and things at home and an environment where you have your own place has its benefits too. Uh, and uh, having a base is good. But if you're coming off the road, then you're facing, you know, trying to get used to the fact that you don't have to be a total minimalist. Although I still think you should live like a minimalist, even if you own a house, because the more you own, the more stress you have. That's a fact because you're going to maintain that stuff. And uh, uh, and that's probably the other thing I want to talk about in my next module is what's going on with our boat. I know some of you guys will go, well, I thought this is an RV channel. And it's like, well, yeah, it is. But I also consider a boat an RV if you can live in it and cook in it and has restroom facilities and sleep, you know. Anyway, so... It's just an RV on water. So if you guys watch our channel, Outdoor Travel Channel, which is where we base this uh, this playlist for RV Talk Radio, you uh, realize that we finally got the boat up to Lake Powell, but it's, i just give you a brief of what's going on with that. We get up there, we launch the thing, we get it, and we're still at the boat launch, and I can't get the engine started. And my batteries are kind of weak, and I grinded and grinded and I couldn't get the engine started and uh, one engine stopped re responding and, and 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 the batteries went dead and we're just stuck at the dock and luckily there was a mechanic there working on another boat on the other side of the dock and uh, I made the decision I probably should change these batteries out because batteries sitting around in Arizona is not good so uh, uh, then I uh, uh, I turns out that I cranked on one engine so bad I wiped out the starter. So uh, we did get one engine started the next morning, and uh, I have a twin engine. Took it over to the slip that we rented for two months at Lake Powell, and it's been about three weeks now since we've done this, and I did make a video called Lake Powell Disaster. And uh, it, we still had a good weekend, but we couldn't take the boat out. That's the point. And uh, so I got this mechanic that I've had a hard time getting him to the boat. And so I think we might go up this weekend and hopefully, because um, once he changed our starter and it's still, want, that second engine won't stay started. It wants to start, so it's, I'm not sure what it is. I'm thinking it's fuel, but because it's always been a dependable engine. So, yeah, we're getting off to a rough start with this, this boat and... Uh, um, and I love her boat, but also I'm finding that all these responsibilities between, you know, we have an RV, we have a house, we have, uh, all these channels, you know, the uh, channel wise, you know, we've got the Northwest custom images, we've got the 80, 20 vegan, we've got, um, uh, two radio shows, um, Arizona talk radio and this show and, uh, the turds, which <laughs> that's our puppet show which we kind of have a following for those, so they expect me to... 
I'm getting to a point I want to get in a video out about once a month for them because it's a lot of work to make videos for them and they usually are kind of music videos. And so, yeah, it's getting kind of hard to maintain everything. So I hate to admit that I might have to reconsider or do something different about the boat um, because it's just one more responsibility. And here's where you talk about being a minimalist, uh, why you want to be one, because the more stuff you own, the more responsibilities you have, which considers you should consider as more stress. And I don't know if I'm stressed and stuff, but I'm frustrated right now because I got this boat sitting up at Lake Powell and we love going up there and stuff. And it's like an RV, I guess. But I to go up there just to stay in a boat and not be able to leave the dock is kind of like, why am I doing this? So hopefully I get this thing fixed. I got, I'm hoping to hear from the guy actually today that he figure out why it won't start. And I'm thinking maybe it's the water separator or something on the fuel anyway we'll see but uh yeah and uh of course it's you know 300 miles away so it's not you know if i go up there i want to enjoy the weekend and i kind of like to enjoy it as a real boat but anyway that's all i'm going to say about that i know it's not exactly rving but it's just like rving it's just on the water So one of the things I wanted to bring up was, uh, you know, I have my boat up, um, boat, my RV up at Central Oregon and I have it winterized because it gets cold up there. And I'm going back up there in a couple of weeks, probably about four weeks. And something I did different that I've never done before other than winterizing it, I taped over all the inlets, inputs of my water heater, my heater, um, my refrigerator, because the you know, I have it off, all the little openings on the side I actually taped over and covered them uh, to help keep critters, mice, and things like that out of them. And I've never done that before. And so uh, I'm curious if one is if you guys have ever done that before when you store your RV, uh, do you cover up all the inlets? Uh, in, inlets, I guess it would be. Um, the other thing is all my in, all my vents, uh, input, uh, uh, for my heating system, we have actually screening over them all to help prevent bringing critters in. And, uh, we actually didn't put that in when we bought the RV. I think I've told you before that it was like 10 months old and we bought it used and somebody that owned it before did that to all the input and output vents. Uh, in the RV with screening, you know, like a screen door screening on everything. And uh, and if you watch one of our shows like a year and a half ago, we actually got a mouse in because they missed sealing one of the holes that go through the wall that was inside a cupboard in the kitchen. And I sealed that up with uh, steel wool and foam insulation. And so um, my biggest concern when it's up in uh, um, Central Oregon is getting you know bugs or critters in it or, or mice or squirrels things like that i've heard nightmares of them getting into uh, your openings in your rv so i thought it'd be a good idea but maybe it's not i don't know i don't see the drawback of doing that other than the fact that don't forget you've taped everything over before you restart everything <laughs> so I'm curious when I get up there is like, did I did a good job? Did a lot of spiders get in or, or did any critters get into the RV um, while it's stored up there? I didn't have that big a problem up in Washington, but in Central Oregon is um, uh, where it's parked. It probably could get a mouse or something if he was determined to get in there. It could, but we'll see what happens. Even the best plans can go muck. But yeah, I'm kind of curious if you... In the comments, uh, feel free to let me know what you've done when you store your RV, if you even store it. Um, not only do you winterize it with antifreeze, but do you cover up all the openings and tape them over or whatever you want to do uh, just to keep critters out, basically. So, yeah, I'd be curious about that. I'd also love to hear in your comments that... Um, and, and I'm sure, I mean, I'm not looking for anything nasty. I just like to hear feedback. But what's your guys' take on some of these nomadic channels that you might see or run across that are just kind of 
living the free life and e-begging or selling stuff or um, maybe doing work camping, which is rare for any of them. Um, do you enjoy those channels or don't you or do you not watch them or what's your observation of are they enjoyable to watch are you envious when you watch them is it almost a jealousy when you watch them um, to me I don't know what it is but it just kind of makes me angry of I I mean it's great to enjoy the environment and all that stuff and maybe doing it for a year or two but if it's a full-time lifestyle I almost feel like they're trying to cheat life and I I don't know and that's my feeling and I'm not trying to but I'm kind of open-minded I can be swayed the other way I just love to hear other people's view on on these nomadic shows of uh, whether it's the nomadic fanatic or uh, some of these couples that are out there uh, freedom theory all those people it's like do you often do you ever ask yourself why don't you you know what what are you gonna do in the future is this what you're gonna do all your life um, are you thinking about the future are you thinking about a foundation are you investing in real estate or anything like that does any of that stuff go through your mind or <laughs> is it just me <laughs> it's probably just me I know but anyway uh, I'd love to hear your feedback and your comments about that if you take the time to in a professional way uh, talk about that subject I'd like to talk about it more um, maybe even a, a different perspective that I haven't um, thought about and um, maybe it's just to each their own is the kind of philosophy I need to have like hey as long as they're happy they're doing they're not hurting anybody hey that's cool but at the same time you can't help but being kind of when you're older tend to be a little bit more like a parent so the first thing I'd ask myself, you know, these people are my daughter's age and my son's age. And it's like, really? What would I tell them if I was their parents? So I don't know. I, it's old fuddy-duddy thinking. But I'd still love to hear your comments about what you think. Or maybe you don't watch those channels. You try to watch, um, you know, people are more in the perspective of, you know, that they put in their time, they retired, and they do those kind of shows, that those are the kinds of ones that are more reality-based. Um, you know, to, to make the sacrifice of being a nomad all your life is quite the sacrifice. And so uh, I don't think a lot of people are up for that, especially if you went out and got a four-year degree and you got a career and all that stuff, and all of a sudden you've decided that you're going to be a, you know, a gypsy. <clears throat> I don't know. Anyway, I'd love to hear your feedback, but... Anyway, it's getting towards the end of the show. I want to thank you so much for listening to our show. I do appreciate your stuff. I do love the comments. If you want to be nasty or a troll, um, that's too bad for you. Uh, I love to hear a constructive feedback. That'd be great. But anyway, um, life is changing. Life is exciting. Life has got all kinds of new things. I hope our subject about eating healthy was um done in such a way that it doesn't turn you off that it turns you on to thinking about changing your eating habits to live longer feel better maybe get over some of your ailments maybe prevent having heart attacks in the future um i just really hope if there's just one person i'd love to hear in your comments too saying i think i'll give it a try um if we've helped one person just one it was totally worth it. So anyway, thank you very much for listening. I'm Rob Scribner. We'll talk to you in the next episode. This was episode 90, 91, and our next will be 92, of course, and we'll hopefully get it done as soon as we can. So busy month coming up, so we'll try to get some episodes out. So take care, be safe, enjoy your RV. Talk to you later. Bye now. Hey, thank you for listening to RV Talk Radio. It was nice to have you. Please take the time to subscribe, like your videos, and share them with the world. Don't forget this is a podcast and you can listen to it on your cell phone. Talk to you later. Bye now.